that new research is also revealing that there are changes we can make in our daily lives, which could significantly reduce the chances of developing Alzheimer's. Professor Matthew Walker from University of California is investigating how plenty of deep sleep could preserve our memories and help fight off the disease. So what we've known for some time now is that as we get older, our learning and memory abilities start to decline. But what we've also known is that a physiological signature of aging is that your sleep starts to get worse. And so based on how important sleep is for effectively hitting the save button on new memories, we wanted to explore whether that sleep deterioration in aging and in Alzheimer's disease is not simply a symptom of the process, but perhaps a cause of the underlying memory problems. His work is based on research into the brains of mice, which shows that during deep sleep, amyloid is cleared from the brain, while too little deep sleep may cause it to build up. Professor Mike in Ledegard has made an astonishing new discovery which explains why this happens. Her scans of mouse brains found small gaps between neurons. These expand by up to 60% when the mice are asleep. The gaps allow spinal fluid to sweep through the brain, clearing out the waste products. As soon as the animal fell asleep, it was turned on, almost like a dishwasher, where these gaps open up and suddenly you see the fluid fluxes that enter the brain and are flushing all the toxic waste product the brain produces when we awake, out when we sleep. The left scan is a mouse brain when awake, but on the right, we see the spinal fluid washing through when asleep. Professor Nedegaard has named this the glymphatic system. Here we see a sleeping rodent brain, and we can see the glymphatic system working. So you see the fluid flowing into the brain and literally washing beta amyloid away. The same thing happens in humans. During the day, amyloid builds up in our brains, and if we don't have regular deep sleep, it starts to accumulate. And we need eight hours of good sleep to actually clean up the amyloid that build up when we are awake. It's clear that the amyloid start to aggregate very early in life. And if we don't have the long eight hours continuous sleep when we are young, when we are middle aged, we risk that amyloid are built up when we are older. Sleep seems to play a crucial role in preventing the accumulation of amyloid. So Professor Walker is trying to find ways of artificially inducing deep sleep. Success could slow the development of disease and strengthen our memories. To start with, he is experimenting with younger brains. Chris is a research graduate. Good to meet you. Come Pleasure on through. to be here. First, he is asked to memorize connections between faces and words. OK, Chris, so what we're going to do is a learning and memory test. So what you'll see on the screen in front of you are some faces, and underneath there will be a word. And your job is to try to connect those two things, to learn that those two things are associated together. And then later, we'll come back and test you. Professor Walker also wants to find out whether a newly developed magnetic brain stimulator can enhance sleep and memory. First, Chris's brain is mapped to make sure the magnetic pulses are correctly targeted. Then two magnets are placed over his head. So the machine itself is going to insert pulses of magnetism into the brain and stimulate those brain cells and the pathways that we know are critical for sleep and memory. So what we're trying to essentially do is prime or sort of grease the pathway, as it were, with electrical stimulation, and as a consequence, enhance the sleep and memory benefit. Electrodes are fitted onto Chris's head so that Professor Walker can observe how much deep sleep he's getting. 
the sleep stimulator seems to be working. The monitor shows sharp movements in Chris's brainwaves, which are the signatures of deep sleep and memory processing. Now Professor Walker needs to know whether this extra sleep has strengthened Chris's memory. Now we're just going to perform the memory test. Chris has to recognize faces from the earlier test. If he remembers the face, or it seems to be familiar, he has to click on it. Then he has to recall the word which related to it. The initial results of this experiment are very encouraging. So what we're finding is that you need sleep after learning to essentially cement those new memories. And as a consequence, when people wake up the following morning, those memories are more robust. People have forgotten far less information across sleep than they would if they'd remained awake. It'll be many years before the sleep stimulator is on the market. By then, Professor Walker hopes enhancing deep sleep will be a major weapon in the fight against Alzheimer's. Can we, in those people who are fighting that battle with Alzheimer's disease, improve sleep quality and try to bring back online some degree of learning and memory function? That's the first goal. The second goal, however, is to regress the timeline back. In other words, can we find ways to start to improve sleep in people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s to see if we can actually move from a model of treatment to a model of prevention.